The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone. This is Tony Butler with Insurance Agency Marketing Services. I'm the Life Sales Director here, and I want to thank you guys for joining us here uh, this morning. Uh, did have some technical difficulties. Eric Ojeda, who is with Emeritus, is going to be joining us uh, to help out with this webinar. Uh, still waiting for him to join. So while we're doing that, I wanted to uh, go ahead and go over some housekeeping items here with everyone uh, real quick. Uh, first and foremost, here at IMS, uh, we understand that you as the agent um, have referrals that are an important part of your business and they're an important part of our business as well. So we do have a referral bonus that we do provide uh, for you as an agent. So if you were to refer an agent to us and we get that agent appointed uh, with IMS, uh, with one of the carriers that we work with, uh, you do get a $50 referral bonus. Any subsequent business that they submit um, with those carriers that they're appointed with, um, we do provide you with uh, 20 basis points um, on that as well. It doesn't take away from their commissions. It's just our way of saying thank you for um, providing the business to us. If you have any questions regarding our referral bonus, uh, please feel free to give me a call. We also have a new Producers Builders um, program, which is for you being appointed first 180 days, uh, we do provide some incentives for you. So if you think that you can uh, submit $100,000 in paid premium and you do achieve that level, um, you can get either a $750 cash bonus uh, to your producer website or an iPad. If you want to bypass that and shoot for the $300,000 level, again, that's paid premium. Um, we do provide you with either a Social Security program and a 3,000 piece mailing, um, a $2,000 marketing and reimbursement dollars, or a $1,500 Visa gift card. Now, if there's a lot of business on the horizon for you and you're looking to um, achieve the $500,000 paid premium level, um, we offer either a 5,000 piece mailing and seminar coaching with Matt Gill, who is one of our top uh, producers, or you can get a 4,000 piece mailing and seminar coaching with Dave Pimper, who is also one of our top producers. Uh, if you just wanna treat yourself for submitting all that business, we do have a Ritz Carlton travel package um, that you can uh, use. Any questions in regarding to the new builders, producers, or new producers, builders, I should say, uh, please don't hesitate to give me a call. Next, here uh, at IMS, we do offer you back office support. We like to say we like to help you work smarter, not harder. Uh, so, some of the things that we do provide. Um, to you as an agent, it's paperless contracting. Um, if you've ever filled out contracting paperwork, you know that that can be a tireless painstaking process. Um, we do offer paperless contracting. So if you're getting appointed with multiple companies, um, that does save you time and carpal tunnel. Um, we also offer top sales expertise and coaching. Um, we do help you with case designs and quotes. Um, there are forms that are available at your fingertips on our website as well as coding tools, which we'll get to here in a second. But I would say that our back office is one of the top back offices within the industry. So um, if you have any questions in regards to what additionally we do provide on that end, uh, again, please don't hesitate to give us a call. Now we do have a creative marketing solutions team. Uh, that team is made up of Jacob Tedlock and Sean Crawford. Um, those guys do an excellent job providing turnkey solutions, agency and digital solutions. So if you're looking um, for professionally written um, handouts or flyers and newsletters, they can assist you with that. Um, if you're looking for logo design or redesigning your logo for your business, uh, they can help with that as well as uh, stationary and advertising. Um, we do offer uh, digital solutions as well, so personal websites, uh, digital marketing strategies, uh, email marketing consulting. So if this does pique your interest and you'd like to get additional information on this, uh, please don't hesitate to give us a call and ask for either Jacob or Sean. They'd be more than happy to assist you with that. Now our 
Prime's website is a 24-7 website. Um, we have excellent sales tools available on the website uh, for you life agents. Uh, you do have the ability to run term quotes as well as universal life quotes. Um, forms, as I mentioned earlier, is available on the website um, for you annuity agents. Um, we do have current annuity news, uh, annuity grid, uh, long-term care agents. We have the product grid available for that. Um, if you're familiar with single premium life, uh, we do have a single premium life grid as well. If you have any questions um, in regards to accessing the website, um, navigating through the website, I'd be more than happy to walk you through that. Uh, don't hesitate to give me a call. Uh, we also have available for you the Retirement Analyzer. Now, this Retirement Analyzer is offered to agents on a 30-day trial basis. Now, what that analyzer does is it helps you answer questions from your clients, such as, can I continue my present standard of living into my retirement years? Uh, when can I retire without running out of money? Or how would it affect my family if I were to die prematurely? Uh, Marcus Soler, who is our annuity sales director, is our subject matter expert on the retirement analyzer. Um, so if you have any questions uh, regarding that, uh, please feel free to reach out to Marcus. Now, I did mention previously that it is um, a 30-day free trial basis. It is offered after that uh, free of charge if you're providing at least 250000 in paid premium, whether it be annuity production or single premium life production. Um, additional charges um, under that, uh, please give Marcus a call. He'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you have. We also have a IMS wealth management team. Now that wealth management team is comprised of Charles Jr., Mike Hansen, and Joan Wallace. And what I like to say about the IMS wealth management team is um, they can help you get in front of higher net worth clients, um, those clients with more investment assets. So if you're looking to increase your revenue, improve client retention, or strengthen client relationships, um, the IAMS Wealth Management team is definitely uh, a team that you need to reach out to. I do have a polling question. So if you're looking for more information regarding IAMS Wealth Management, uh, give me just a second. I'm going to pull up that. Uh, please go ahead and answer that question, and I'll be more than happy to uh, get some additional information out to you on that. So just one moment here. So let me launch that. I'll leave this up for a few more seconds to make it, make sure everybody has a chance to respond. Okay, we'll go ahead and close that out. Next, if you're familiar with Dimes, you know that we do a Life and Annuity Academy. Uh, we try to do one of these once a quarter. Um, it's a two-day training that Dimes picks up the tab. So we're paying for your travel, uh, your lodging, and your food. And what this two-day training includes is sales ideas and strategies from some of our top producers. Sometimes we will uh, co-host with the top carrier and they will provide information in regards to uh, sales ideas and strategies for the products that they do offer. Um, we do talk about large life case marketing, uh, sales and software tools. So in a nutshell, what we like to do with this academy is talk about sales ideas and strategies to help you as an agent grow your business. So if you like more information regarding um, our Life in the New Academy, I do have a polling question for that. If you can go ahead and answer that, we'll make sure to get out additional information. The last one that we had was this past uh, September, so just a few weeks ago. Um, I believe we're not having another one till I think, uh, sometime first quarter. I um, haven't gotten information on that, but once it becomes available, we'll definitely get that out to you. Okay, so I'll close out that. Next, uh, we do have an IMS at the 2020 uh, Marketing Summit. Um, it's a producer social and educational event. 
is from August 26th through the 29th. Uh, invitational period is from July 1st of this year to June 30th of 2020. Um, it's going to be on the shores of Santa Maria. If you have questions regarding um, eligibility, uh, please give us a call. We'll be able to provide you with more details on that. And speaking of trips, we also have our producers escape in 2021. Um, additional information is coming soon, but know that the qualification period is July 1st of this year to December 31st of 2020. So again, the location information and details will be coming soon. Um, once we do get that information uh, nailed down, I'll definitely get that out to you. Uh, Eric, are you there? I am here. All right, awesome. What I'm gonna do is turn the presenter over to you. So give me a second here. All right, you now have control. So everyone, Eric Ojeda. All right, perfect, thank you. Uh, hopefully you can see my screen okay, Tony? Yes, yes. All right, great, great. Well, thanks uh, everyone for being on the call and thanks for having me on as well. I'm, I'm very excited to be talking about our IUL today. So we'll, we'll kind of be uh, talking about some of the features of the IUL and, and really how you, how you sell IUL. And uh, keep in mind, we also have a term product available through IMS as well. So our, our two FLX products, the FLX Living Benefits Term and the FLX Living Benefits IUL. Hey, Eric, can so I stop I am, you real quick? Uh, Sorry to yeah. interrupt. Okay, I'm just seeing the Emeritus Retirement Solutions uh, screen right now. Okay. Let me... Uh... Sorry to interrupt. No, no problem. I'll just share my entire screen. That'll probably be easier. Okay, there we go. Okay. We got you now. Okay, perfect. All right, thanks. All right, perfect. Yeah, so um, today, again, I'll be mainly focusing on our FLX Living Benefits IUL. Um, so I'm the internal wholesaler, and I also manage our internal sales team here at Emeritus. Um, and I work closely with uh, the regional VP here at Emeritus that will work with IMS, and his name's Lance Larson. So you may say see him out in the field, hopefully at some of the events that IMS puts forth. Um, but when talking about IULs, you know, it's great to know how uh, a product works and, and what all the features are, and I will cover some of those things. But what I discovered over the last year and a half since we launched this product and following up with agents that have been, you know, presenting the FLX IUL or IULs in general, and, you know, if they have me run an illustration or my team is working on a case for them, and we follow up to say, hey, you know, how's that coming along? Uh, you think you're going to get an app? Do you, you need any more illustrations? Is there anything else we can do for you? One of the answers we get typically is, well, uh, my client didn't didn't buy. They they weren't interested. They they like the concept, but uh, they didn't see the need for them. You know, and obviously we have the need right away with with death benefit and and of course uh, the living benefits that come with it and, and the cash accumulation story. But oftentimes the clients that we're talking to think what they're doing for retirement, whether it be with their 401k or their their IRAs or their Roth IRAs, is enough. And they shy away from doing anything else because they think what they're doing is going to get them through the retirement years. So I started to think back, uh, back when I was an agent in the, the late nineties, early two thousands, you know, I sold life insurance for retirement income purposes. And I, and I said, well, what did I do uh, to get that sale to make sure those people really saw the need for what I was showing them. And it was kind of a paint a picture of where they were headed. Uh, based on asking the clients questions about what they're currently doing for the retirement and then showing them what that's going to look like in the future. Because I feel if you show the clients that what they're doing isn't going to be enough based on what they're telling you, that might help you get the sale or get more interest in an IUL or life insurance for retirement income planning. So we have a simple tool here that I'm going to show you and how I used it um, and really show you how to shape the conversation with your client on, on why they might need to be doing something else. Okay. So keep with me and we'll, we'll kind of show you this beneficial tool as well as tie it into some of the features and that the FLX IUL offers. So uh, like I said, this product's been out a little over a year and a half. We launched it in February of 2018. So we're, we're almost at two years here, hard to believe. Um, but what we wanted to do is take what IULs were doing uh, you know, death benefit, cash accumulation, tax-free income. And then you have the new IUL, and that adds in things like living benefits. 
And we believe we created the new, new IUL, taking death benefit, growth, income, um, experience, and living benefits, and taking them to a whole new level. So when building a product or talking about a product, you have to think about who the clients are that will be impacted by these products. And really, IULs are all about growth and income, although we have death benefit and living benefits. So if we're looking at growth and income, let's look at the, the top five concerns of pre-retirees. And if I ask who a pre-retiree is, generally the answer is somebody that's you know, 55 to 65 years old. Okay, they're getting close to retirement, they're, they're thinking about retiring. But when I ask myself who is a pre-retiree, and hopefully when I ask Tony the same thing, we're gonna say, well, all of us. Anybody that plans to retire is a pre-retiree. I, I plan to retire, I, I hope to retire at some point. I'm sure Tony does as well. You know, all, everyone on the phone, you are insurance agents, so I, I know some of you will work all the way till age 100. Uh, that's just kind of the, the nature of the business, but yeah, hopefully you plan on retiring and living some life as well. So the concerns that our clients, and I know I have, are, are these. You know, what will Social Security look like when I retire? Will it be there? Um, probably not. It may be very little. You know, will we have tax increases? Are we going to be in high tax brackets when we retire? That's a big concern. I don't want to give up my money because I've increased my tax bracket. Will I be able to keep up with inflation? Uh, number four, uh, this is a big concern. People are living longer. That means living in retirement. So they're worried about outliving their assets. And then the ups and downs of the stock market, we see it all the time. It, it takes a long time to recover from losses. So people are concerned with a prolonged stock market downturn. And when I'm talking to people about retirement income planning, I ask them two questions. The first is, when do you plan on retiring? You know, it gives me a, a ballpark figure. It, it, it doesn't matter a whole lot because that age could change. We, we never know exactly when we are going to retire. We know when we'd like to. But the second question is, is really the important one. How much do you need to live on in your retirement years? Okay. How much do you want as an income to get you through your retirement years? And let's say they, they need 100000 per year. The day they retire, they'll need $2.5 million stashed away. If they need half that, $50,000, they'll need half that saved up, $1.25 million saved away. Now, whatever the number somebody tells me, you know, they'll either say, you know, I need, to, I need to live on less than I make now. And that's probably not true. I mean, most people aren't going to want to live on less money and, and have less of a lifestyle. Uh, just because of retiring doesn't mean their expenses are cut or their mortgage is paid off. In some cases that does happen, but, but not always. So some people will say, I need to make the same that I make now. And, you know, I guess they're, they're used to a certain lifestyle, so that might be the case. But they're really not thinking about inflation. And what I live on now is not actually worth the same as what it is then or uh, after then. So in most cases, I would think people need to live on more than they make now. And the reason could be to keep up with inflation. But oftentimes, it's because of free time. People have a lot of time on their hands. They have more hours in the day to fill with things that cost money. So they travel, they go to movies, they go out to eat, they uh, golf, uh, they oftentimes buy a new house. They, they paid off their house and built a bigger house. That's what my parents did when they retired. So you get a, need to get a figure. How much do you need to live on the day you retire? But are most people doing enough to retire, to live in retirement? And, and the answer is no. So Limra did a survey of 1,000 people in 2017. Now the average cost of families close to retirement and these are those people 56 to 61 years old, had $163,000 saved up for retirement. Okay, the median was $17,000. So that tells me there's a couple of these thousand people that had lots of money saved up, but most had very, very little. So 17,000 means these people are going to retire in poverty. 42% of Americans are at a risk of retiring broke. Now, if you look at these 1,000 people surveyed, 26% had less than $1,000 saved up for retirement. And the numbers don't get any better going forward. Only 14% had more than 250,000. And probably even smaller percentages had close to a million or two million, which is what most people need to retire. So this tells me if this represents America, most people are not saving enough for retirement. And that's where we can help all these people with the products that we offer. So how long will people live? You know, if you, if you were to look 30 years ago, 40 years ago, people were living into their 60s and maybe early 70s. 
That's not the case anymore. There's a good chance that your clients will live into their 80s and even their 90s. A 65-year-old male has a 50% chance of living to 85. A 65-year-old woman, a 50% chance of living to 88. A married couple, both 65, have a 50% chance of one of them living to age 92. And when I say living to age 88 or 92 or 85, you can guarantee that they're also going to have some medical expenses, things that they need to cover in those later years, okay? It costs money to live in our retirement years. So how much will they need? Well, you can expect to spend about half of your retirement income on basic living expenses, just enough to get by. Only 18% of our money actually goes to discretionary expenses, so the fun things like traveling and hobbies, okay? So as a result of this, three out of five pre-retirees and half of retirees anticipate needing to tap into their savings just to live, fill their basic needs. So what are people spending their money on and how much do they actually need? Well, most people right now are relying on Social Security. 42.5% of Americans are relying on Social Security to make up a percentage of their income. Okay, So where are they getting the rest of their money? 25% uh, from their 401ks, a little bit from their other interest-bearing accounts. Some go get a part-time job. Okay, So Social Security, we all know, is not going to be there. So they need to do something. So suppose your client now requires $50,000 a year to maintain their lifestyle, and they'd like to maintain that standard of living when they retire. So let's take a look at a, a just inflation, an impact of inflation, 3%. So if your clients need $50,000 a year to live on now, and they don't plan on retiring for 10 years, they'll actually need to live on over $67,000 per year. In 20 years, so if they're 65 now, at age 85, that $50,000, they'll actually need $90,300. And if they happen to live well into their 90s, age 99, that 50,000 now would be valued at 136,000 then. So that's what I'm talking about. You gotta keep in mind that people are going to need to live on more when they retire. So a lot of people are relying on social security. The average monthly social security benefit is under $1,400 per month, less than 17,000 per year for the poverty levels. And if people aren't saving up enough, because they're relying on Social Security, they're gonna have a major, major problem if it is still there. And that's where 401k, pensions, Roth IRAs, and life insurance, products like the FLX Living Benefits IUL come in handy for tax-free retirement income. So why can't they just do um, IRAs or Roth IRAs or mutual funds, CDs, all that good stuff? Why, why would they use life insurance or in particular an IUL? Well, for one, it gives them income tax-free death benefits. So right away, the very first monthly premium they pay, they have a legacy they can leave to their beneficiaries, okay? Uh, Tax-deferred growth. They don't pay any taxes while they're accumulating interest in life insurance. They have that upside potential and downside protection. We know it takes a long time to recover from market losses. You don't have market losses in an IUL. There's also no contribution limit. So maybe they are contributing to a Roth IRA, but they max out. They can only put in $6,000 per year, okay? So there are limitations there. Or maybe their income's too high and they're not able to do a Roth IRA or something like that. There, there's limits on how much you can do. With IULs, there are no contribution limits. They can put as much as they want into life insurance. They have ready access to cash values. There, there's no uh, you know, penalties for taking the money out before age 59 and a half. You're never forced to take money out because of an RMD. Uh, there's no effect on Social Security if they have it. And of course, living benefits are another great aspect of IULs these days. So that's great. So we can easily just stop the conversation there. We can take it to our clients that here's all the things IUL does. Here's an illustration. Look at the cash accumulation growth. Okay. And they go, well, that, that looks great, but I don't need it. I'm doing enough. So I'm not going to buy it. And that's where we miss out on the sale. So how do we talk to our clients about using IULs and also the need to have enough to retire? Let's take a look at a case study. So Tim and his wife, they plan on retiring at age 65, and they plan to live in retirement to age 90. Live, meaning enjoying life. That's why they worked all these years, because they want to live life now. Now, after talking to Tim, Tim needs to have an income in retirement of about $225,000 per year. Now, after talking to Tim and his wife and looking at what they're currently doing, his projected plan will give them right over $188,000 per year. How do I know that? Okay, I'll show you how I know that. So more importantly, what can they do? 
save more money. So this is a simple tool we have, and I can send it out to Tony and he can send it to everyone. It's, it's a, a really easy needs analysis, retirement income planning tool. Now there's tons of tools out there. You can find them all over the place. I think this one's very, very simple spreadsheet, easy to use and easy to understand. So basically I'm gonna go through and ask Tony and his wife some questions about what they're currently doing for retirement and fill in the spots on this, on this spreadsheet. And it's gonna tell me what their plan is going to do for them. So first off, under client details, I know Tony and his wife are 35. They told me they plan on retiring at 65. Of course, that could change, but that's the plan now. So years in retirement, um, or years to retirement is 30 years. And then they told me they plan on living to age 90. So years in retirement is 25 years, okay? So in the box that says potential income analysis is when I start to ask some questions. So first question, they're 35 years old. How much do you currently have in your 401ks or in your IRAs, things like that? And Tony or, or Tim says, you know, we, we got off to a pretty decent start. Uh, we got about $100,000 saved up. So I plop that in there. And Tim, how much do you put away per year into your 401k and in your, in your IRAs, all that stuff? And we put about 12500 Okay, great. I put that in there. And how much do you think you can make on that investment? If you had to average it over the, the next 30 years, how much do you think you'll make? I'm, you know, I think 7%. That sounds pretty conservative. I'll, we'll, we'll do that. Okay. Well, 7%. All right. So that gives us an idea of what you're doing for qualified money. Do you have any money saved up that you plan on using for retirement? It's not necessarily qualified. So it's non-qualified money. It could be CDs, could be money markets, mutual funds, anything like that. Yeah, we're, we're not doing so great there. We have about $10,000 saved up. And, and how much you put in for, to that per year? Uh, not a lot, about $500 per year. Okay, and any type of return you think you can earn on that? Well, uh, we'll be lucky if we make 3%. Okay, so I put that information in. The spreadsheet then in the middle part of that, that box calculates what all that will be worth at retirement age of 65. So according to what Tim and his wife told me, that 100,000 with that annual contribution of a little over 12 will be valued at a little over $2 million. So they'll be able to pull out withdrawals for 20 years of over $173,000. Now that non-qualified money, that 10,000 plus the 500 per year, not as great, it's gonna be valued at right under $40,000. It's gonna give them an income of a little over $2,200 per year. So if you add those together, that's where I get that projected income. Oh, and you'll see there, I also added in, you know, maybe, maybe that social security income, 12,000 per year, or maybe that's a, they're driving Uber or something like that. So I added in another 12,000 of expected retirement income. And that's where I get the total retirement income that I saw on the previous slide of 188,000. Okay, so we got some numbers to work with. We have a story here. So in the bottom of that, that square, I say, well, Tim, you told me you need 225,000 saved up for retirement or to spend a year in retirement. Oh, what you're currently doing is only going to give you an income of 188,000 per year based on everything you told me, okay? So you're gonna have a shortfall of about 37,000 per year. So we gotta think about some options, Tim. Um, your options really are, uh, you can live on less, so live on less of a lifestyle than, than you wanted to, but you told me you wanted 225,000, so that's one option. Your other option is to earn more on your investments. You, know, you, you told me 7% is what you thought you could earn, maybe you can bump that up to nine or 10. But you know, Tim has no control over how much he's gonna earn. That, that'd be kind of a ridiculous projection, nine or 10%. Or Tim can put away more money. And, and that's probably the answer he's going to need to hear if, if he wants to live on 225000 in retirement. Okay? So the next thing I would do is since I now have shown Tim and his wife that they're not doing enough based on what they're telling me, my next question to them would be, you know, I'm going to work on a plan for you to kind of get you closer to that 225000 But I need to know how much you could afford to put towards something to get you the retirement income that you need. And the reason I asked this question is I did not wanna start showing illustrations of a premium amount that they weren't going to be able to afford because then I'm just kind of selling myself out of the deal again. So I would get the commitment up front, and based on that is where I would go with the illustration. Now, if they wanted to fluctuate that later on, that's, that's a different story. But Tim says, you know, I can give you $450 per month. I, I feel comfortable doing that. So now we know Tim and his wife, 35 years old, 
uh, we're just going to run them at standard non-tobacco. We know they're not doing enough retirement. So Tim currently has a deficit he needs to overcome when looking at what he will have saved up for retirement. And when I asked the question, he committed to $450 a month to get him closer to his goals. And hopefully it does. So I go into our illustration and run a quote, okay? So here we have a 35-year-old male, and um, we're putting in $450 a month. We're max funding uh, an illustration. I'm using option A. Uh, because I like option A, it gives us a higher death benefit, higher living benefits, both a win-win for the client. So Tim funds this thing, max funded, all the way to age 65. And then based on a 6.9% illustrated rate, he's able to pull out uh, a little over 37000 per year. Okay, so let's go and see if we did our job. Now, if we go back to our spreadsheet, on the right-hand side under policy details is where we're going to put in some of our, our life insurance information. So for one, uh, we have our annual premium paid until retirement. I put our monthly. So it's 5,400, which goes in there. Our initial death benefit was right under 445,000. So that's important that they know as soon as they pay that that first $450 monthly premium, you know they're they're set with a death benefit of almost 450,000. And then it asks potential withdrawals of retirement. So this is that income stream that we show within the ledger, and we put over 37,000. And then we also want to know the death benefit. At retirement age, okay, because it does grow. So at retirement age, it's five hundred thousand dollar death benefit. So if Tim unfortunately died the very day he retired, uh, yeah, that's sad for the family, but not to worry. They are left with five hundred thousand of tax free death benefit. And we still know that Tim's re desired retirement income is two hundred twenty five thousand. So the policy details then fills in the bottom section on the left. That thirty seven thousand four six six goes into the chart. So we recap. You know, what Tim was originally doing was going to give him an income of $36,984. So in the bottom part of that box, it says that $188,000 per year, uh, plus the $37,466 that the life insurance policy gives him, total retirement income or potential for retirement income with the life insurance policy is $225,482. So now we've given him a little bit of a surplus, but we've given Tim the additional money that he needed to get him and his wife through the retirement years. Now, did I set this up so it worked perfectly? Yes, I did. I made sure that I was gonna cover Tim's needs, but that's not always the case because you have an amount that your client is giving you. So let's say I came in less. Let's say I said, hey, Tim, you know, this 450 a month is only gonna give you 200,000 of income total with, with your other investments. You know, I, I'm still giving Tim $12,000 more per year than he was originally going to get. So that's probably gonna work for him. Or he can say, you know what? I originally told you $450 a month, but I think I can bump that to 500 or maybe even 550. And that's gonna get Tim closer to where he needs to be. But it's a great, great tool to actually show your client why they do need what you're telling them instead of just showing them an illustration or telling them all the great things about IUL. You're taking their words and giving them their story. So Tim was able to make up the gap in his retirement income. He's able to get tax-free income from his IUL. And Tim has death benefits that will take care of his family and living benefits to help with the unexpected. So we have all these IULs on the market that can help Tim with his story. So why the FLX IUL? Well, we have a, an amazing growth opportunity with this product uh, because of our multiple index options to choose from, including one that I'll focus on called the uh, BNP Paribas Momentum 5 that comes from us, to us from Bank of the, uh, Paribas Bank, which owns Bank of the West here in the United States. This is a volatility managed index. We are the only IUL that's able to offer it. And we also have an account value bonus starting the 11th year. That's 50 basis points, uh, not tied to the performance of the index. So the BNP index, it comes from us from Paribas Bank. Um, it is a volatility managed index, so they're looking to monitor this index and make sure it has steady performance. We have a one-year point-to-point and a two-year point-to-point, both uncapped, okay? So the sky's the limit. But where the real story here is our participation rates. We offer 170% of the one-year point-to-point, so we'll credit your clients 170% of whatever the index does. On the two-year point-to-point, we actually increased this about a month and a half ago to 225% participation. These participation rates have been this way 
since we launched the product over a year and a half ago. And like I just said, the two-year points point actually went up. So you're not gonna see these types of par rates with any other carrier on an uncapped strategy. So what does it look like in actual numbers? Well, we back tested uh, this index um, to look at what it would have done over the last 15 years. So the BNP itself over the last 15 years would have averaged about 5.2%. If you apply the 170% participation, you're looking at about 9.3% over a 15 year average. That's, that's a huge uh, return potential. The two year points points average 6%. And if you apply the 225% participation, that's 12.3%. Okay, so you can see you're not going to be able to see these types of returns um, anywhere else, any other IUL in the marketplace. Now, I had lunch with Tony uh, a month or two ago, and we kind of went over these returns. But I want to take it one step further because it's great to see, you know, back testing and, and what it what it could have done, could have, would have, should have, all that good stuff. But what are we actually crediting with our BNP index? So we just started crediting our first interest in February of this year, okay? And we've been crediting each and every month. Uh, we have three different sweep dates, the 5th, the 15th, and the 25th. So let's just look at the 15th of the month. So you can see February to February, 15th to 15th, we would have credited our clients 3.8%, okay? So that would have been the lowest crediting period. Our highest crediting period would have been August 15th to August 15th of this year. We credited those clients 11.4%. And you gotta think most people are putting in monthly premiums, so they're getting all of this, right? They're getting March to March, they're getting April to April, they're getting May to May. On average, we've credited 6.4% to our clients with the BNP one year point to point. All but one month, we have credited more on the BNP than we've credited on the S&P. A great, great story. And I did just see the crediting for uh, September, that was over 11% as well on all three sweep dates. And uh, October is looking just as strong. So very, very solid performance over the last year and a half. But if you like the, the S&P, we have that as well. We got a one-year point to point with an 11.75% cap, very competitive. Uh, Two-year point to point with a 30% cap. And then a one-year point to point with a cap of a 7.25 and an adjustable par rate with a par of 140%. And for that income story, of course, uh, what I showed Tim was pulling out variable loans. So we have the option to pull out fixed loans or variable loans. But for those clients that are worried about outliving their assets, because that is a concern of pre-retirees, we have a lifetime income rider. No additional cost until if and when they use it, they can turn their cash value into a guaranteed income stream that they can't outlive. All right. Want to, for, for time, I want to get into the next concerns of pre-retirees. These all have to do with, with health concerns, okay? Uh, number one, Medicare benefits. What will those look like? Will they be there? Will they be reduced? How will, the, how will they help us? Number two, we just talked about living longer. It's not just about outliving our assets, but it's living longer with health issues or recovering from health issues. Uh, critical chronic illness no longer mean death. Oftentimes they mean you're going to recover, but there's a price tag to living after you recover. You know, the medications that come with that, the, 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 the healthcare, the, the, the need for long-term care and assisted living facilities. Uh, and that takes us to number three. How are we going to afford long-term care facilities? The, those price tags are astronomical. Now, if you look at the stats, the average cost of having a stroke is about 140,000 in someone's lifetime. The average cost of a major heart attack is about a million dollars of direct and indirect cost. 760,000 for less severe heart attack. You know, when I look at a million dollars for a heart attack or even like a quadruple bypass surgery, I'm thinking, well, how is that possible? Most people have insurance. I know my dad had a quadruple bypass and it did not cost him a million dollars. So, so who's spending a million dollars on these things? And then I think about it, you know, the conversation I had with my siblings, because my dad, um, after he had his quadruple bypass, he had a lot of health issues after that. Um, memory issues, and we never thought my dad would be the same, and that he would need some, some serious care. Thankfully, he's recovered. But the discussion my brother and sister and I had were, you know, who's going to step away from their job, maybe go part-time, and help mom take care of dad because she can't do it alone? Well, if one of us would have done that, that's income, and that's, uh, you know, an impact on our families. And that's some of the things that go into that million-dollar cost, uh, not to mention my dad's loss of income during that time. Heart disease, 
ridiculous. It costs lots and lots of money, and that's not going to go down anytime soon. But most importantly, 60% of all bankruptcies in the U.S. come from medical bills. And 80% of those bankrupted patients actually had health insurance in place, and it didn't save them. So thankfully, we have this thing called GoFundMe. But GoFundMe is not life insurance, and I will contribute to a GoFundMe every day if it's the right cause. But people are relying on GoFundMe because they're not insuring their lives, the, the most important thing. They're not insuring their lives with living benefits policies. They're insuring their, their homes, their, their cars, because they have to, their cell phones, their tablets, but they're not insuring the thing that's the most important. So everyone on this call, and if it's recorded, everyone listening, is in a position to put your clients and the people you know in a position that they don't have to rely on GoFundMe. So again, let's go back to the Emeritus FLX IUL. How can this help with that health crisis? Well, it's our living benefits. We have 18 living benefit triggers, 18 reasons your clients can get their death benefit early. And they choose how they spend the money. Now with our living benefits, uh, they're way different on our IUL than everyone else's IUL. Everyone else's IUL says, hey, we have these living benefits and we'll pay you out 90% of your death benefit up to a million dollars or 1.5 million, whatever the number is. But it's all based on how serious your illness is and how long you're going to live. So not everybody gets 90% of their death benefit. We offer that on our term and it's a great story with term, but, but not a great story with IULs. Because in most cases, a critical chronic illness is you know, moderate risk or, or low end. So they're not getting the majority of their death benefit. And what happens is if they take the full amount they're eligible for, their policy's gone, which with an IUL, if you're using it for retirement, why would you want to give that up? With our IUL, we pay out living benefits based on a lean approach. So there's no severity of illness, no life expectancy. The amount the clients can accelerate is predetermined the very first time they see an illustration. It's a percentage of the death benefit. And whatever amount they take, it's a lien against the death benefit. So they still have the remaining death benefit in force. They still have a policy they can pay premiums on and build that cash value and, re, re, uh, and use it for retirement. So the FLX, we have the same 18 triggers on both our term and our IUL. We have the same non-med opportunity on our term and our IUL. We are non-med up to age 70. 300,000 or less, and that's a true non-med, not one of these maybe non-meds, a true non-med up to 300,000, age 70 or younger, no paramed, no labs ever. The great news is, and you're hearing it here first, uh, we're looking at mid-November, mid but mid-November, we're looking to increase our non-med. So we keep the 300,000 or less where it is now, and then 301,000 and more will be that maybe non-med. So you have an opportunity to do some accelerated underwriting there as well. Also with our living benefits, Everyone that's table D or better or rapid standard or better on our non-med gets all 18 triggers, so we don't have any knockout questions. We're not going to take anyone's uh, triggers away because of, of something in their background. So what triggers do we have? Terminal illness, 12 months to live or less. Chronic illness, they can't perform two of the six activities of daily living or severe cognitive impairment. Just a 90-day wait. Critical illness, we have 15 triggers including some critical injury. We only have a waiting period on three out of these 15. So stroke, paralysis, coma, the other 12, you can accelerate right away. So great story there. So what can you accelerate? Like I said, it's predetermined. There's no severity of illness, no life expectancy. Terminal illness, clients can get 75% of their death benefit, max payout to a million. Chronic illness, 50% of their death benefit, max payout to a million. And critical, 25% of their death benefit, max payout to a million or sorry, 250,000. So if you uh, sell that non-med at 300,000, these are the numbers your client can accelerate when they become sick, 225, 150, or 75. So what that means, complete transparency. Your clients will know the very first time you talk to them about the IUL, how much they're going to be able to get if they become sick. Again, we're non-medical, face mounts at 300,000 or less, age 70 or younger. You can get non-med preferred as well, and that doesn't take a paramed either. Um, as far as uh, what we issue, at preferred or better, 42% of our policies uh, that are fully underwritten, we issue at preferred or better. 
71% of our policies get issued at standard or better. Those are great numbers to share. Um, if you're on Facebook, search for us on the, uh, search for the independent space. Say you're with IMS and we'll preview to be part of the group. Uh, this is a great place to get what's new with our distribution channel, what's new with our products. So we'll announce things there before anywhere else. So just go there, search for it, and ask to join. If uh, you have a term quote that you need, uh, I think Tony mentioned that they, they do have a term quoter or you have access to that. Um, we do have our own mobile app for quoting term, and there's a link to our e-app in there as well. So just go to your app store and search for FLX Living Benefits. Obviously, if you need help with anything, you can, you can rely on Tony and his team over at IMS, but you, you can rely on us as well. You have access to our sales team. You have access to underwriters. You have access to new business. Um, and our number, you'll call that, hit option one for FLX. Option one, again, will get you sales or two for new business, three for underwriting and so forth. Tony, at that time, I can turn it back over to you. I don't know if there's any questions. Yeah, actually, I did have one, and I was going to open it up for questions, so just a moment. Let me turn this back over to me as the organizer. Okay, do you see my screen there? Yes, I do. Okay, so it looks like the first question that we have is, is there a PowerPoint that we can share? Yeah, yep, I will send this one and the, the calculator tool to Tony to give to everybody. Okay, sounds good. All right, let me see. Got another one. Okay. I'm going to paraphrase this one here because okay. I think I know what they're asking. Um, Basically, in the nutshell, they're asking how is the Emeritus product different or better than, let's say, competition or other carriers? All right, that's, you know, that's a good question. Um, for, I want to first phrase when, when looking at the competition, you know, there's lots of great products. So I always tell agents, you know, our product is not the, the right product for every one of your clients. That's why there's so many products out there. So understand the features of the product and, and that's how you can make the determination. And definitely don't rely on an illustration because you know, those just show numbers that could possibly happen, but, but not the real story. You know, I think some of the places that we shine is that true non-med opportunity uh, on that 300,000 or less, age 70 or younger. That's a unique story. Not a, not a lot of people have that story because I, I was telling you, you know, a lot have that maybe non-med. Right. So I think that's a good opportunity. Um, you know, our bonus on the IUL started in the 11th year. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, there's no multiplier. There's no uh, calculations you got to try to figure out. It, it's straightforward. It's 50 basis points. So your okay. client's getting half a percent uh, bonus on their cash value. So that's that's a, an advantage. I think, um, you know, not having knockout questions on our living benefit triggers, that's huge. You know, uh, we're not going to say your client's diabetic, so we'll give them standard, but they can't have critical illness. Uh, so that, that's been an advantage of ours. Um, and then, you know, the BNP index itself, I showed you the numbers that what we've been crediting over the last year and a half. Uh, I showed you the par rates for that uh, in an uncapped strategy. Illustrations do not tell you that. That is a huge potential for growth to be able to offer your client something like that. And, and that's where we've seen um, probably the, the biggest growth opportunity, uh, just people loving that story. And, and, you know, it's one thing for people to say, I love that index. It looks awesome. But people are actually, when they're selling our policies, are selling that index. That is what they're putting their clients' money into. So I, I, I think those, those things there are, are kind of the key selling points. Okay. And, you know, one last thing is, you know, when, when I see companies offering IULs, I've seen a lot of fluctuation in cap rates. You know, I've seen some carriers lower their, their cap rate five times in the last year and a half. We've lowered ours once. And we just don't make it a habit of doing that. And that's part of our mutual story. We, we try to keep consistent with our policy holders because essentially they own the company. Gotcha. Okay, I'm checking to see if there's any other questions. I'm not seeing any. So with that, 
for those of you that are on the call. If you're looking, if you're not already appointed with Emeritus and looking to get appointed, um, I do have a quick polling question for you on that. I'll make sure to get that information out to you. I'll leave this up for a little bit, give you the opportunity to answer. So it looks like Eric, you've drawn some interest on it, so that's always good. Sounds good. This up for a few more seconds. Okay. All right. So with that, if there are no more questions, Eric, I want to thank you for um, taking time out of your Monday morning uh, to go over this. Some, definitely some valuable uh, information. Um, we'll make sure to get that information out to uh, those that have requested it. Um, for those of you that did join um, the webinar, those of you agents, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy Monday. Uh, it's always kind of crazy to start the uh, week off with the webinar, so it's always appreciated um, when you do join. So thank you again. So everybody have a great week, and we'll look to talk to you soon. Thanks.